if there is a person, a cat, or a dog mm -hmm. in the picture, it will automatically capture all the depth information. Because it recognizes the subject. Yeah. Yeah. If there's not, it won't unless you tap on something. Um, I, I want to have to test it. We're going to have to try this stuff out. I mean, I think it'll be good. I also want to I want to mess with the computational, the AI so bad. Like, it says, they said dogs, cats, and people. Yeah. So if I get, like, a raccoon... <laughs> We're gonna get a studio Those raccoon, more like a ferret, like raccoons something are, close. What about like you a know? reptile? You know, I think it would still trigger. Yeah, I bet if I search my. Is this gonna be a video? <laughs> I, think yeah. I think it would be fun to just see how. Just far go to the zoo. Yeah. I only see still work fine. I mean, you tap to focus on a ferret, it'll work. But like, yeah. if I just point it at the ferret, will it go? Oh, it's a cat. I want to know. Is I do think we should go to the zoo. I think this is I a agree. good video. That would be a great studio video. A, a tiger is a cat, but like, is that? Gonna <laughs> anyway. All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And if we sound a little bit different, well played. We haven't said much, but you've already picked up on the <laughs> fact that we're in a different spot than usual. And if you're watching it, you can tell it looks a little bit different. That is because we are still, as we record this, out in California at Apple Park uh, because... We're a day after uh, Apple's Wonderlust event. So uh, we've got these nice chairs here. We've got this nice setup courtesy of Apple's podcast studio. And over here, actually, Adam and Ella says, as of right now, have twice as many microphones as, as usual. We're up. <laughs> We're still going to only use one, though, even though I just broke that rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got a podcast table. They've got the producer table over there. And uh, we're going to have a very fun episode with a lot to talk about because you know, there wasn't a whole ton of announcement products at the event, but there's still a lot to talk about, which is an interesting distinction. So we'll just jump right into that stuff uh, right off the top. What do you want to start with? Because I feel like... I we think didn't. we have to start with what they started with, which is a quote from the man oh, himself. True. Fair, 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 fair. God? I mean, how, how cool is that? They... <laughs> Here, yes. <laughs> but, like, they opened the event with, a quote from you they and you weren't expecting that right I, they did yeah so i'm um, sitting in we kind of got like separated a little bit when we went into the event kind of we were all over the we, were we were scattered we were sc i missed you guys i missed you we made a rookie hours. mistake and we came in at the back of the line there were no like pods of seats open so we had to take what was available so i'm on one half you're on another part we're all spread out but i'm in this like sort of front corner and uh they open with this like heartfelt you know, here's how many lives the Apple Watch has saved. Sort of classic tearjerker Apple moment for the beginning of the keynote. Then Tim Cook comes out and uh, immediately does the thing that Apple loves to do, which is where they sort of recap some of the stuff that's mm -hmm. happened since the last event. One of them was the MacBook Air 15 going on sale. And he goes straight into uh, some quotes and immediately says, And Marquez Brownlee said, the 15-inch MacBook Air is going to instantly rocket to the top of the lineup to become the most popular 15-inch laptop. At first when that happened, I was like, did I say that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did actually say that. It was kind of a shortened version of what I'd said in my MacBook Air uh, 15 review. Um, and then the other thing that happened was when they said that, he said, Marquez Brownlee said, and I felt all the eyes around me in the studio just kind of go like that's exactly what i was gonna me. ask how many people yeah. just swiveled in their seats to stare yeah at you? it was and i was trying to like read what was happening i was like that i did say that whoa i saw crazy. a guy in front of me take a picture of it and then immediately tweet it at you i saw him like pull up on twitter and then pick you and like tweet it at you that, I thought that was pretty cool yeah yeah we so that's it's kind of a full circle moment i just i thought it was super cool obviously they did it was a total surprise i didn't know that mm -hmm. that was gonna happen but um you know we said some things about their products. They they chose a quote. It was uh, Tim Cook's reading it on stage that sort of validated it. And then my phone blew up for the next like hour. Um, sure. Uh, yeah. You you mentioned though on Twitter after how like a few years ago, YouTube and and what you started like you were doing wasn't really invited to a lot of events like this. And how like now not only that but you're opening the they're opening with a quote from you. Not only that, then right after Vision Pro quotes came up you were in there as well talking about the vision pro yeah i don't know I, there were more quotes so it was harder to see that but yeah i think justine was in there too yeah, yeah. Nice it, again. it's really cool so yeah. from a point of not being invited to that to also we're sitting in a podcast studio on apple campus and they're helping us like like film this for us in a better yeah. spot than when we've set it up in the hotel before so like thank you again this is this is really cool but yeah, yeah it's come full circle we really are up as else we're, we're, we're up, up. 
<laughs> but okay, so we got a couple announcements. And by the way, this does not mean I'm going easy on any of these things. Just, no, saying, just saying, no, no. Tim, I appreciate it's a, shout it's out. a dark enough shadow that we can't see the people staring at us. <laughs> why we say this? So yeah. we're good. Yeah. But we got some stuff. I mean, we knew we made our predictions, and we'll go over those later. Mm-hmm. But we knew we were going to have an iPhone. We knew we were going to have an Apple Watch. We knew some other USB related announcements would happen. What should we get through first? What do you think? I think maybe the watch. Yeah, let's just, let's do it like how they yeah. did it. Just okay, go through. They also did right before that. They mentioned that Vision Pro was on track for early 2024. Yeah, they said early, early, which is nice. I like early and I like on track. Those are all words we appreciate January when we're trying 1st. to see things. Better be January first. I feel another prediction <laughs> coming because when I hear early, I think Q1 or last Q2. day of Q1. No, last day of Q1, last day of Q1 is Q1. my okay. Yeah, that's your I think that's a good that's a good target. <laughs> May thirty first, final answer. Close <laughs> that's that's last day over. <laughs> okay, it probably is. Um, okay, so the watches. So we got two new watches. We got Apple Watch Series Nine and Apple Watch Ultra Two. Here's the thing that struck me the most immediately was, and I was talking to you about this, David. Mm. There's no outside visual cue that you're wearing the new Apple Watch. Yeah. Other than one new color. Yeah, the regular Apple Watch Series Nine is now in pink. It's okay, a very so nice there's, pink. there's a pink one now. Um, but yeah, they didn't do the ultra black. The ultra looks exactly the same. Exactly. Titanium, the same. same coating, same look, same shell, same size, same same look. Yeah. I mean, it is a brighter display, but it, it looks the same. So like on the street, I would expect like maybe if since there's no black version, maybe a new color button, maybe something. Nothing. Nothing. Same exact look. And so they if stopped you've seen selling one, the original one too. Yeah. 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 So so what's new? Internally under the hood, the biggest update is the S9 system on a chip, or SIP as Apple calls it. It's so system funny. They rebranded to system in processor. System I thought in it processor. was system in package, but it's system in processor. I had to make David explain this to me when we were walking to lunch yesterday. Yeah. I was like, yeah. did they pronounce chip just, was I confused? No, they said it again. Sip. That's not right. Sip. Okay, SIP. It's the SIP. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Instead of SOC. Yeah, SOC. <laughs> SOC. SIP. SIP. But that, that like is better. apparently a big, uh, a big performance upgrade and a big efficiency upgrade. It processes processes things faster, makes the watch overall faster, and that's great. Processes data from the sensors faster, which is important, which we'll get to mm-hmm. in a second. Um, and that, because it's more efficient, Apple says that'll allow them to crank up the brightness of the displays even brighter. So the S9 or the Series Nine will get up to two thousand nits, and the Ultra will get up to three thousand nits, which makes it the brightest screen Apple has ever put in anything. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. I can't wait to use it outside. Very smart to do that in a very small package first and then eventually mm-hmm. probably grow it up because yeah. it's going to get hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, well, I don't want to talk too much about the Ultra. We'll talk about brightness on Ultra later. We'll stick with S9. Um, it is interesting to me that they have this new processor. It's kind of a big deal because they almost reused the same processor over and over and over again. They kind it differently. Yeah. But it was pretty similar. This year's a pretty big upgrade. Um, I would think they would use those efficiency gains for better battery life on the regular Apple So Watch. it's funny. They've been quoting this like 18-hour battery life for like every generation of Apple Watch for years. Yeah. And then the Ultra has like the 36-hour or whatever with low power mode. Mm-hmm. But it's always the same. And it seems like because they don't incrementally improve it every year or they don't aim for some big battery bump every year, that that seems like that's fine. Yeah. According, I mean... A, they haven't improved it. They haven't changed it. So it seems like if they get efficiency gains, they'll turn them into brighter screen or yeah. something else before they turn it into more battery. But I think most people just want better battery life. I agree. It's the main reason I use the Ultra yeah. is because I don't have to think about battery as much. I get a day or two full before I have to think about charging. Yeah. But that's just me. It's yeah. also a huge watch. Yeah. So it is what it is. But yeah, battery life is the same. Um, but the one interesting thing really is... I think it's the most interesting thing. Double tap. Double tap. Double, okay. Yeah. So double tap. Double tap is a gesture that you do with the hand that is wearing the watch, where in thin air you simply double tap your finger and in, your thumb and index finger together, and that will select whatever you're choosing, whatever's happening on the watch. So whatever the primary button is in the app on the watch. So if you have a FaceTime call incoming and you double tap your fingers together, it will accept the call on the watch. If you have a timer that just ended, double tap, it'll stop the timer. All kinds of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. First of all, I got to try it in the hands-on area. They put a watch on my wrist and they said, go ahead and try it. And it worked very, very well in person on a watch I'd never worn before. So I thought that was super cool. I did mm-hmm. notice that when you put it on, it just like worked immediately. Right away. Which like brings me back to, do you remember the um, 
was the LG phone with like oh, the no. hand waving over <laughs> that was the, the exact the opposite experience G7 of like seven things. I think so. Yeah, something. it was at that that like penthouse in it New had York. The, was, uh, glucose the, the vein like ID. the vein id yeah, 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 yeah. And, oh my god i have so many videos there, there's just, videos of just people like doing waiting. this over the phone like <laughs> just nothing mm. is working and all the pr people at lg are just like no 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 just maybe a little more like this yeah, oh that's yeah. weird it's not oh, this god. is like you put the watch on and, and it just worked yeah. i think this is one of those features that's shipping like a month after release or something i think oh you're really right. yeah oh. so maybe it's not perfect yet but it's it says available it's next month they said mm. yeah but it worked pretty well for me the other thing interesting thing about that though um, is a lot of you might be typing already, so you can stop typing, <laughs> saying, this isn't technically new. Yeah. This has existed as an accessibility feature in the Apple Watch for years. It's being moved, being graduated to a primary feature for everyone because... for a couple of reasons. I think the, the, the one that stands out is this is also the selection mechanism for Apple Vision Pro. Yep. Tapping your fingers together while looking at something on the screen selects what you're looking at. Yeah. And I think if you get people used to that gesture early, great. Yeah. I don't know what that means if you're wearing the watch and Vision Pro at the same time. That might be kind of funny. I don't know what happens. That's an interesting point. I mean, <laughs> I think Apple wants a lot of cohesiveness in how you For interact sure. with its devices, of right? Pinch to zoom is like you, you do that on the Mac trackpad. You everything. do that on the iPhone. You do it on everything. Hold, like all their all their ways that you interact with their devices the same. So if they can start onloading people right now with the Apple Watch. Oh no, I just realized. What? If they make a new mouse. <laughs> pinch mouse? It's gonna have to be a pinch <laughs> gesture. Well, they don't wanna make a mouse because everything is just gonna be oh, floating. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah. But the other interesting thing about, um, so yeah, so you've been able to do that, but this feature is not coming to older Apple Watches. And I found that kind of curious because Strange. it's in the accessibility settings. Yeah. Why isn't it also graduating to a primary feature? Apple says, when asked about that, um, basically the new S9 system on a chip is fast enough that it's able to process all the information from those same sensors, the accelerometer, the gyroscope, the heart rate sensor, faster in a way that they're comfortable making it a primary gesture where this Excel accessibility feature was not a primary it, miss, maybe it does yeah. seem better like i think um adam and ellis had it pulled up on their watches when we got back doesn't work well <laughs> it's not a, it's nowhere near as Wait, good what? Whoa, 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 no 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 whoa, whoa. I, I, was, I, I have yet to have I, it fail a single I, you time you both really? have showed me and it's failed no, both no, times no, no, you guys no. have showed me <laughs> text me right now text me right now i'll prove it I'll do i was, it on I was using it on my watch and it was it was not doing i've only it been well. using it to dismiss things yeah any same. other action kind of is Give me like hit or miss, mm. but anytime I get a notification, and typically where I have to swipe down, hit dismiss, do that whole thing, yeah, I could just double tap and it goes away. I will also cool. say the the fist clench detection oh, yeah, does not one. work as well as the yeah. tap yeah. detection. Okay. I think also, the idea though is it's it's like if you have something going on in your other hand, which happens sometimes. Like yeah. normally for me, the move is the nose. I don't know how many of you guys yeah, do. I do it so much, dude. But like <laughs> I do that all the time when like, I'm keeping bees. In yeah. the event, no, it, in the event it was so funny how the, when they were talking about it, they're like, yeah, if you're walking the dog or you're drinking coffee. And then in the cinematic, it was like a man handling a swarm of bees. <laughs> like <laughs> way more extreme. I, the dog walk is a totally reasonable aspect yeah. for that. Like that's exactly what I thought. Like I've walking dog needing to, yeah. yeah. Or carrying um, something with the other hand. Groceries. There one, was one, one though. Dismissing your alarm with double tap. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. so dangerous. Yeah, I'm just subconsciously that going sleep. to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's going to be muscle memory. You, none of you guys are going to show up to work anymore because it's going to be noon and you're back. Like, I've been double tapping the snooze all morning. Yeah. <laughs> that is a dangerous one. I mean, so the, there is a, there's kind of a moment where you raise to wake and then it lights up. Then you double tap. So if you're just like hand resting on the couch, double tap, that's not going to do anything. I think. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Please come to work. <laughs> um, I did kind of like um, Siri plus health, where you can use oh, Siri right. to talk yes. about things like how where your move rings at and like yeah, yeah. how you slept last night, yeah. like logging data with your voice, I think was kind of cool, even though I haven't used uh, an Apple Watch. In, but yeah. like the workout stuff was my favorite part with it. On device Siri is on, a pretty big mm -hmm. deal. I think the on device stuff because of that made it really cool. It so it's working so much faster. Yeah, I forgot to mention the, the watch actually has more memory. I think it's double the memory built in now. So they're able to do all of Siri's queries on device. Yeah. And because it's doing everything on device and it's secure, of course you can enable more stuff like ask me about my own health data. It never has to go to the cloud. Because right yeah. now it does a round trip 
yeah. whatever I think whatever you ask it. Yeah. I have, obviously, if I ask the weather in Cupertino, it's going to look up the weather and bring it back down to you. But if I just want to know something like Locally. when's my next calendar event, something like that, yeah. Yeah. the fact that it could just sit there spinning, like your yeah. internet's not good enough to tell you what's on your phone, like yeah. that was kind of crazy. I think that's really big. Yeah, like yeah. I think that's a huge quality of life upgrade. When that's... Google added this to Google Assistant, it was huge. Mm -hmm. Cause it got they, way faster too. It got way faster. I remember yeah. they did this like four years ago maybe. Mm -hmm. And I remember they were like, we used machine okay. learning to condense the machine learning model to be able to fit on your phone. <laughs> what up dog, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think they're, they're doing the same thing here, which is great. Um, Let's we'll just make you guys trip. use Siri more. No, no. I mean, the okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm editing the video right now where the the line I have is like, Siri isn't good yet, but it, it'll be bad way faster. Yeah, which is better, but not good. I think yet. it depends on what you use it for, right? Because I recently started getting a little bit integrated into the HomeKit ecosystem just to test it out at home because okay. I have these like Matter enabled. That's smart probably lines. the perfect thing for it to be better at. I think so. Yes. yes, because I just ask it to turn on my lights or open my blinds, and those are pretty basic queries, but it's more of the, like, Googling things that it's bad well, at. That's why yeah. I think this will be good inside the health app, though. Yes. Like, I think this will work pretty well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I had two more quick things. I had second-gen ultra-wide band, um, which oh, yeah. haptic plus audio feedback, trying to find your phone. That's pretty As cool. someone who leaves my phone literally yeah. everywhere, that yeah. sounds awesome. They on that note, mm -hmm. they also tripled. It's the second gen ultra wide band, is has tripled the range. Oh, really? So now you can um, you can start finding the thing three times further away than you could before. And if you use Find My Friends and you're like in a yes, market or something, I thought something, that was really cool. It's way easier to find people that you know. So if they have either an iPhone 15, which also has the second generation, mm -hmm. generation UWB chip, then you want to say that again. <laughs> second, the second generation UWB, UWB say that three chip, times. Yeah, is. Yeah. or an Apple Watch Series 9 or Ultra 2, mm -hmm. then you can sort of like navigate and find your people, which is which is really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give it to your kid. <laughs> <laughs> find find them anywhere. Find uh, my child. And then the other thing I had, you talked about brightness, but also down to one nit for a dark room. Oh, I yeah. thought it was kind of cool. Just like the Apple Watch, are, I want to know the current number because it, it gets really dim it does. right now. Like one, if you're in a nighttime environment. Yeah. But one nit. How do you, one nit is nice. There's so many times just in like in bed, no matter what like device I have, no matter how dark I put it, it mm -hmm. still feels like I'm being blinded by yeah. it. So like I'll take anything. 3,000 nits is down. brighter than the sun, so you're good. <laughs> It might be. <laughs> so that's that's the watches. Um, I think that's basically, I mean, the other interesting like background thing is, and we'll talk about sustainability. Do you want to talk about that now? I think we can talk, guess, that's where yeah. they, wait, wait, before though, mm -hmm. the they bands. showed some new watch bands. Yeah. The tan Nike silicone sports band with like yeah. the orange and brown dots. Do you know what those dots are? No. Dirt. <laughs> Ground up, recycled other bands that's no cool. way yeah it looks cool i don't care what it is it looks sick that's yeah i would cool. yeah i think I that's the, that's the uh that's the segue to sustainability because apple had this extensive section on sustainability okay. this skit on sustainability they mentioned it countless times within individual product announcements but one of the things is there's no more leather products at all in any of apple's lineup at all uh, which, as you're probably thinking, is like, well, a lot of watch bands are leather, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So there's a ton of new watch bands and a ton of new fibers and threads and recycled materials, and Nike has a recycled yeah. band, and Hermes, or however you say it, has a bunch of new bands Hermes. that are not leather either, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wow, they they went yeah pretty ham on sustainability. They changed too. it to be called Fine Woven, and it's like a... It's a really finely tight... Mo woven mesh yes. that is, kind of looks like leather in a way. It, I Ish. mean, I've held them oh, all. None of them to me feel like leather. Okay. They just feel different. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to even get into the trap of making something that feels as close to leather as possible because yeah. it's never going to like feel leather. like leather. Yeah. So I just think like go for other feels, go for other materials. Yeah. If you want leather, you can get leather, but yeah. like that's, Red that's, leather, you know, it won't get it from leather. Apple anymore. Something we were talking about was they're also replacing the leather in the Apple stores for like the seats that you sit on, the little cubes that have leather oh, inside oh, really? of them. Wow. They're getting rid of them and they're replacing them with fine woven seats. And we were talking about like, <laughs> is this less sustainable? Cause they're getting rid of leather and then shipping more stuff yeah. over to the Apple Genuine Washington? question, genuine question. If you have leather seats in thousands of stores, what's more carbon neutral, <laughs> leaving them there or <laughs> 
getting rid of them all and shipping a bunch of non-leather things there. Yeah. I understand the statement. They don't want to have leather appear in anything. They don't want to have leather anywhere. But that thought did cross my it, mind. It yeah. also, it's like a lot of quote unquote, like vegan leather or leather alternatives are, are just petroleum products. You know what I mean? Like they're plastics and petroleum products. So I don't, I don't know what their the leather fine alternative woven is. The fine woven is probably not I think it seems like a lot. It's probably yeah. like a... I don't remember a lot. It seemed it like recycled was used a lot. A term uh, recycled used very dinosaur often. bone juice, though. <laughs> 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 so, I, I do. Ashes? I had a <laughs> thought. <laughs> I, I want to look more into this. Like, there is a lot of genuinely good stuff being done between the recycled metals, yeah, the recycled plastics. Uh, they were able to announce that the Apple Watch is their first quote carbon neutral product. Yeah. Now you can't technically make a carbon zero product but they're able to offset the last little bit of carbon emissions that they know it contributes so it's their first carbon neutral product and they want to get the whole company and everything they do to be carbon neutral by 2030 yeah i think there's good stuff there yeah um and i had a, a meeting and a briefing where they they introduced me to way more of this stuff i just don't know enough about it i, I want to do so much more research and talk to more people but Definitely. i i had this like analogy that i made in the video which is like you know those like TikTok videos where you see a guy like slip a homeless guy a hundred dollar bill, but he's also mic'd up and it's like a yeah. video that they're making and the comments are like, you didn't really care about that. You just wanted to get the clicks because you're just doing it to get the video to make you look cool. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're probably right. But also someone in need just got a hundred bucks and now it's technically a net yeah. positive. It's like, okay. Apple's going to pat themselves on the back with an eight-minute sketch with a ton of slides on every product page and with, like, all the stuff that it's talking about. And a lot of people will rightfully say, like, look, Apple's a huge company with a ton of emissions. Yeah. It's still true. But the fact that they are making some progress and doing progress something is, at yeah. all and making a show about it in general, you might not like that, but that does inspire other companies to try to do the same thing. For sure. Yeah. So I, I can't get mad at it. I still think it's a net positive. It's super net positive. And yeah. also... I thought the skit was good. The skit was I liked it. I thought it was funny. I thought it was way better. I thought it was way better than any other company just being like, we're doing this, 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 and this. You it was see, funny. I like seeing Tim, Tim Cook. Cook. Yeah. Skits. I yeah, like yeah. seeing Tim Cook in a skit. I enjoyed the skit. Usually a it's lot. Craig. We didn't see Craig this time. It was Tim in the skit. Yeah. You want to guess how long the skit was, Andrew? I thought I looked back. It was Wait, like four minutes. It's five minutes. Yeah, it was five minutes. I think that's reasonable. It's pretty long. It felt. I think five minutes is reasonable. Before I looked it up, I would have sworn it was 10 minutes long. I liked it. Like a 10 minute YouTube video. Yeah. It there, was pretty fun. I am curious. You guys are watching too much TikTok. Everything's too long. <laughs> for you. I want to look up how much, like, how many carbon offset credits are integrated into this because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a really good John Oliver episode on this. But yes, like, there is. It's crazy how you can sort of just buy carbon credits and then it's that money is supposed to go towards like offsetting carbon by like creating more sustainable things. But a lot of the time it doesn't. It's, so. there's a, there's so many. Again, this gets so complicated. But and in the like skit, the, I think they like kind of brought that up. They addressed, but it's a little still bit. Yeah, it, yeah. It was addressed a little yeah. bit, but I don't. Well, remember. that's why it's I just like, want to. It's like a, very yeah. hard to know it's as so well. Hard. Yeah, it's I think so that hard. there are some companies who genuinely are like this operation's carbon neutral, and it's totally not. Yeah. But they just bought so many carbon credits that it can technically be on paper. Yeah. Where like Apple is at least doing like. Site, sourcing new materials from recycled sources instead of the typical like virgin materials, like yeah. actually making parts of their supply chain more sustainable, which they may also buy carbon credits, but it's like all of it adds up. You there, know, there was a funny one where they were like, "We're able to pack twenty five percent more Apple Watches in each shipment," and I was like, <laughs> "Sure." <laughs> You're also saving money on those shipping costs. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's both good for the environment and good for Apple as a business, which ultimately, like, it's good. Cool. It's ultimately good. good. Also, the Apple yeah. Watch box has always been way too big. That thing should just be smaller in general. You it don't need to lay the, the box. It's bigger than the iPhone box. That's yeah. it, crazy. It doesn't need to be laid flat. It can be, that box could still be It might size, have to be I laid think. flat because of the bands. I don't believe that. Those big bands. Just put no, the bands just have on it, it, make it a little circle, circled. make it a little box. I think it would be fun. Oh, oh, oh yeah, circle, I think square. Yeah. The way a lot of box watches come is it basically is like wrapped around a piece of plastic and then right. can come in like yeah. a cube. 
You should pitch that idea to Apple and see if they save. <laughs> Anyone billions. listening back there? I think they're trying to like split the difference because they want to make it feel like a luxury for watch sure. unboxing and all of those. It has like a that. totally different unboxing feel, and, yeah. and people appreciate. That. I was yeah, gonna say sure. you should see how like expensive Rolexes come. Jeez, I actually have no idea how they. Come <laughs> the packaging package. is crazy. Really, it's it like a whole a thing. They like present it to you. The guy has wearing like white gloves, takes uh, it off. It's like a whole thing. It's like when you see a Bugatti delivery video and they like give you the key in like a briefcase and it's just a tiny key in the <laughs> yeah. you're like all right great yeah. i get it okay yeah. cool. well you know strike the strike the balance there uh right. before we start virtual we just didn't say that the series 9 starts at 399 oh yeah same yeah. prices same price same prices also the ultra is the same price 799 yeah i think that's it we're gonna get to the phones of course but before that we should take a quick break and before that break we should do trivia trivia yeah <laughs> Oh, that's that feels very loud. That's bassy. Bassy. Trivia, dude. Okay. <laughs> first question, pretty straightforward. Mm. Which iPhone Never was is. the first to come with FaceTime? Oh. I know that. I think. Ellis knew it. I don't think. Know. Instantly. I have, a, I have a guess. Do you guys know it? I have a I've never had face FaceTime. Guess. Wait, we didn't remember. Did we remember whiteboards? Oh, oh we no. did. No. Damn, I forgot. Oh, oh again. Well. Here we go. IPad. This oh, is my iPad. Yeah, we can we, just we'll we'll, we'll figure notes. something out. Do you want to draw it on the notes app? <laughs> okay, that works. We'll figure something out. <laughs> we'll all like write you, it on our. You guys have about forty minutes, and then show it. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Bye. Support for this show comes from Wix. So you've probably heard about Wix, right? The website builder with templates, designs, SEO tools, you name it. But have you heard of Wix Studios? It's their new end-to-end -end platform designed exclusively for agencies and professionals. So with Wix Studio, you have total creative freedom to deliver your most ambitious web visions while still smashing your deadline. So you can create intuitively on Canvas with smart features like no-code animations, or you can take more control with custom CSS and back-end coding. Plus, their most complex layouts can adapt for every screen size. So from a centralized workspace to an on-canvas collaboration to reusing assets across sites, the workflows just make sense. Wix Studios can help make your ideas come to life. And with the most advanced native business solutions from e-com to events, booking, and more, you can cater to every industry. So this is just a glimpse of what's possible with Wix Studio. Find out more at wix.com slash studio. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about, uh, I would say, the headlining, the flagship announcement from AirPods. this Wonderlist event. <laughs> it wasn't AirPods, <laughs> believe it or not. We got something bigger. Um, no, it's, uh, it's the iPhone. We oh. got a new iPhone. Really? A bunch of new iPhones. Oh. Isn't that exciting? I guess. There's a ton of new stuff. All right. A ton. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Plus, iPhone 15 Pro, and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Which should we start with? The regular ones so that we can get people to listen to the podcast longer. Retention. Yeah. Retention. Good idea. Retention. Okay. Business. iPhone 15 and 15 <laughs> Plus. So these at first to me, because there are so many things that Apple does where technically they're not new features, they just came from the pro phone of the previous year, I started to write it off as not a big upgrade. But then the more they got into it, and then once you hold it, it's actually a pretty I, yeah. decent yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I just don't like that they started off by saying all new design, because let's be real. <laughs> it's metallic That's iron, That's not the bro. words I would use. Slightly more curvy design. It is an updated yeah. design. I'll let you use that word. So new colors, a new curve radius on the aluminum all the way around. Wow. And then, no, it feels different in the hand. It does, it's, it's, yeah. it's less sharp. Yeah. It does. It, it makes a difference. Yeah. And then they have this like color infused back glass thing that they're doing where it's one piece of back, one piece of glass on the back. Yeah. But it goes from a lighter satin finish, which that's new for the non pro phones, satin finish. Yeah. To a darker version of the same color around the camera bumps. Yeah. And it's one piece of glass and it's this sweet, I don't know how they do I it. I want to point out when they were talking about how they did it, they were like, dynamic infused ions and i was like i don't know what you're talking about i don't know how you do I it i believe you the, the end result is pretty cool i love that it's that it's satin now um i guess with that what they're saying essentially is that that clear part over the cameras they can adjust the saturation of it because before it was just kind of like clear and you kind of got whatever the color came through so this time now it looks more like a an on-purpose they color. said they yeah. infuse the color into the glass metallic ion i yeah. have no idea what that means but you know, it cool. lo it looks solid. There's a new yeah. pink. There's a I nice how it's yellow. Made an about that. I, that would be kind of sick. Actually, That'd be great. I would watch that. Okay, yeah, pink, yellow, blue. Pink, yellow, blue. Green, green, uh, black. green, and black. black. It's just like the C. It's kind of cool. Like I like that they're adding all the fun colors to the 
regular I, line now. I liked the colors a lot. Line. I thought they looked good. Yeah. I yeah, definitely yeah. thought you meant sea like the ocean. And Me I was too. like, David, what are you talking about? I was like, all those colors okay, kind of sound say? like the ocean, but like not Like the iPhone 5C. Oh, the yeah. 5C. I should have said the 5C. Oh. Wait, did they all think he meant the ocean? ocean. It's yeah. just like the ocean. <laughs> the pink the sea. The I agreed, ocean. weirdly enough, too. Yeah, no, it's I was like black, why, blue, green. Felt... I was like, sounds like the ocean to me. <laughs> yeah, pastels, totally. <laughs> wow. um, okay, so specs-wise, I mean, they're the same size phones, same size screens. What you're getting now is a brighter display. What is it, 2,000 nits now? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you get the dynamic island. Yep. Which and I called. You did, did call you? it. I did call yeah. it. Is that one of the predictions? Like the okay. It, was oh, yeah, it wasn't one of the predictions from last week, but oh. it was one of the predictions from, from like, like last year. Two or months ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it officially has a dynamic island. And it has the A16 Bionic from the 14 Pro. Yeah. Right. So we've seen this chip before, but it is an improvement. It is it's gonna be faster, more capable. Uh it now also brings the 48 megapixel primary camera from the iPhone 14, 14 Pro. Pro. Yeah. That was a pretty big upgrade. That's a nice mm-hmm. camera. That's a bigger sensor. And, and there's a lot going on with the software. Oh, there's so much. There's a lot going on with the software. And this, I think I kind of missed it during the keynote. Yeah. But basically, it's kicking out 24 megapixel images by default now, not 12. Mm-hmm. So what we're, what we're doing before is we were getting quad pixel binning. So yeah. it was the 48 megapixel cameras, and all of them would give us the normal 12 megapixel shots. And we've seen that everywhere. Quad pixel binning is very common. What Apple's doing is not quite that. Actually, it, it is that and also more. More. Yeah. <laughs> So they're taking quad pixel binning 12 megapixel image, combining it with individual pixel 48 megapixel shot, yeah. merging them together to use some of the light information from the 12 megapixel and the detail information from the 48 megapixel to turn it into a detailed and bright 24 megapixel, sort yeah. of like a hybrid fusion photo file. Yeah. And that's the default now. What's I'm, a picture? What's a photo? I'm realizing how important those animations in the keynote are because just watching yeah. you move your hands around is very confusing. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot going on. And I kind of missed that at first. But yeah. not only are you getting a new sensor and a new uh, image pipeline, but all of that is happening now yeah. by default. And, oh God, there's so much more software with the pros. But that's basically the new thing that's with so the cool. cameras. I liked the portrait mode stuff that they talked yeah, about. Oh, that's yeah, new thing, I think that so. was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. next gen portrait mode. Yeah, it, it essentially is automatically capturing depth information, so you don't have to so turn on portrait mode. It's interesting. If there is a person, a cat, or a dog mm-hmm. in the picture, it will automatically capture all the depth information because it recognizes the subject. Yeah, yeah. If there's not, it won't unless you tap on something. If you tap it captures depth information. So I think it doesn't want to unnecessarily capture that information, okay, yeah. but it assumes that when you take pictures of people, cats or dogs, you would like it. Yeah. So you can change the focus at any point. That I thought was cool, how you can change focus between subjects like yeah. as well and, and yeah. change the bokeh on that. This is yeah. an interesting thing because we sort of hit this state at one point where you had to make portrait mode because all phones were like the equivalent of F32. But now we're getting these bigger sensors with these like more wide open apertures. Yeah. So you kind of have this combination now, but now you can sort of take part of that computational photography that was useful before and not really anymore and bring it into the like modern smartphone cameras. Yeah. And now it's just fun. You it's like an enhancement. It. It's like an enhancement now. Yeah. Instead yeah. of a necessity. It's good. Um, I, I want to have to test it. We're going to have to try this stuff out. I mean, I think it'll be good. I also want to, I want to mess with the computational, the AI so bad. Like it says, they said dogs, cats, and people. Yeah. So if I get like a raccoon, <laughs> we're gonna get a studio Those raccoon. Are more like a ferret, like Raccoons something are close. What about like you a know? reptile? You know. I think it would still trigger. Yeah. A well, reptile might a reptile, be kind of. I don't know. No. Kind of far. I think it's only. I think it's furry cats, cases. dogs, and people. But like, how do you know it's a cat? It's, or a it's dog? the same thing as uh, Google Photos. It, it like can recognize. But Google what Photos isn't hundred percent accurate. No, it will. That's I'll, true. I'll get like. That's true. I bet if I search my. Is this going to be a video? <laughs> I, think I think it would be fun to just see how. Just far go to the zoo. Yeah. I only see it'll still work fine. I mean, you tap to focus on a ferret, it'll work. But like, yeah. if I just point it at the ferret, will it go? Oh, it's a cat. I want to know. I don't know. I just I want to. What about it out cardboard out. shen? You think that would work? That'll work. I bet that works. That'll work. That cutout will be perfect. Yeah. On yeah. It. I do. I do think we should go to the zoo. I think this is a good video. That would be a great studio video. A tiger is a cat, but like, is that good? Anyway, good point. Um, these really are all make, very important questions that need to be answered in the full review. So really that's why that's coming think. later. Really makes you think. Um, but yeah, that's that's a bunch of stuff. I mean, these are very these are relatively important things. But that's not the most important thing about the new iPhone, is it? All right, USB. I yeah. forgot the yeah. entire yeah. reason I'm upgrading. Oh. Huge thing. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's got a it's got a USB C port now. Yeah. The iPhone. It was kind of funny looking at the iPhone 
and seeing that USB port. No matter how many times I look at it, it's kind of still processing, yeah. but it's real. I haven't plugged in a USB-C port to one of the new ones yet, but I think when I will, that's when it'll hit. That's probably when. That's when yeah. I'm be like, gonna be like, it's real. My life. When I have one cable. <laughs> We've done it. Which by the way, it's- <laughs> We did it. <laughs> Society uh, if. It's not the same. <laughs> But one cable, uh, yeah, one cable for the for the Mac, for the iPad, for there's still other stuff by the way that needs to get upgraded. Yeah, yeah. But the new AirPods case is USB C, so there's AirPods Pro case there. Your friend's Android phone, whatever your laptop, what your Surface laptop you use, like everything, yeah. one cable. Yeah, how sweet, convenient. Is yeah. yeah, thank get, you, Europe. Oh, and here's another. <laughs> I think it's more important for us Android users is I can help my friends with iPhones charge now. Actually, you know how yes. many times people come over and they're like. Do you have a charger? Yes, I'm like, true. yeah. <laughs> Whoops, it's not that. Sorry. Yeah, Claire yeah. and I both use an Android, so we're like that weird house that doesn't. Or you're like an Uber, yeah. and you're like, do you have a car charger? And like, yeah. And they hand it to you, and it's a lightning cable. <laughs> that happens like, a lot well, to me. Crap. Yeah. I got offered the aux cable in an Uber once, and he. Handed I can me still a use that. Cable. Just saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, because you can do. He said, do you want the aux? And I think for like, iPhone users, man. like whatever, plug it in. Wow. Were you here in San Francisco when that happened? I think I was in New York Uber. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Other cool thing. One fact. Oh. Are we gonna say the same thing? The you bet. You better out. now. The if you don't. Power out. We are the same yeah, person. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a fascinating new feature. No, you go first. So, so there is no reverse wireless charging, but yeah. there is now through that USB port, reverse wired charging. Yeah. So you know you're gonna get that C to C cable in the box. You can plug in your AirPods from the iPhone and it will charge up the the AirPods battery from the iPhone battery. Yeah. Which is kind of cool, but even cooler. Yes. You're probably wondering Oh, you are. what happens if I plug in <laughs> my friend's iPhone to my iPhone? Do you want to guess? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> there's a there's a correct answer here and there's actually two answers. That's true. It sounds like there's not a correct answer if there's two answers. Well, there are two different scenarios. One is you plug in your friend's lightning iPhone with a USB-C to lightning cable, yeah. in which case every single time charges the, the USB-C iPhone will charge the, the lightning, lightning iPhone. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can see why that. Yeah. No matter what the battery state is. Mm -hmm. I say that because if you plug in a USB-C iPhone into another USB-C iPhone, there is a special handshake where the really? phones talk to each other and they go, how much battery do you have? And the other one goes, how much battery do you have? And the one with more battery will charge the one with less battery. Yeah. This I is weirdly, so chaotic. I, I love it. Real. I, I want to take it. this where one is at 50 and one is at 51. That's I, a great question. And then it's just going to turn into like where you call two they pizza delivery they people. Don't they forth. don't. No, oh, they don't. don't. It just Whichever starts. one has it at the beginning. Okay. So you'll, the funny, I want to see like a phone that's at like 52 and a phone that's at 50. And it just pushes all the power into yeah. the other phone. One will end up at 100 and the other will end up at zero. one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah. trying to explain this to your mom. I think that's still going to work. Like I you just do. plug your phone into the other phone. Yeah. No, but what if it goes in the other direction? Or what if they have a lightning phone? Well, you would never do it if you had they more saw it battery on the commercial. than your friend. Now I'm going to just yeah. plug it in with I my friend's phone. I think this is fairly <laughs> fail safe. I think, I think it's, it's fairly good. Fail I think safe. it's like I have 2% right now. If you plug in your phone into mine, can I get some of your battery? And you plug it in and it works, you're like, damn. That's pretty cool. That's pretty solid. That's pretty cool. Then they I plug also, in Andrew's Zen phone and it explodes. <laughs> I don't know what happens if you plug in other non-handshake phones. It pulls up the Apple Store on my phone. <laughs> it just says <laughs> straight to the It looks like you want to buy an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Buy your mom an iPhone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's iPhone 15. Wait, so the, the, the cool thing about that, we were talking to one of the guys during the briefing, and he was like, yeah, I usually just like bringing one brick to an event, so I bring a brick that is a MagSafe charger, MagSafe charges my phone, and then I put a USB-C cable in the phone and charge like my AirPods with that. Right. And therefore, then you can charge everything. You're like wired chaining. Yeah, which is the same thing people with reverse wireless charging were doing. They were just yeah. plugging in their phone, turning it over on its face, and then putting the wireless charger earbuds yeah. on the back. But like this is wired, so it's yeah. four and a half watts. Oh, and fun thing we learned is that you could charge things with lightning through the iPhone before, question mark? I think so, yeah. But it was 1.5 watts, yep. and they moved it to 4.5. Right. So, cool. Yeah. So there you go. Four there and a half go. watts to charge AirPods. Can I have something irrelevant but happened <laughs> during the announcement for the iPhone? Sure. I, guess I think my favorite transition of their event was during that. 
and it was right after, which also they showed voice isolation for phone calls, I think was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But right after that, she's like, of course they have apples here. And there's this box of apples and it zooms oh, yeah. into the road logo, like on the apples and then goes into this like road and then they he steps out onto the road. Did you like the music at the same time? I didn't. The music was, you know, the marimba, like, do, 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 you know that, like, classic iPhone? The bump, uh, bump, bun, and that. No, it's a, uh -oh. <laughs> the classic iPhone ringtone. Oh, yeah. It was that, but slowed down during was that it? transition. I didn't, I didn't it was a that. great transition. It was a great transition. I, I think that transition and way back into the, there was one where it went into somebody's watch into, like, the Apple fitness room to talk about yeah. Siri plus health and, like, zoomed into the watch and then was cool. then inside. Mm, it was really cool. It's pretty Apple cool. and the transitions. And they brought drones back again. They did. I feel like they didn't do drones at DubDub. It was all like visual, like color animations. And mm. this was, we were back. Yeah, I had drones. a moment where I was watching the event because it was like Tim Cook came out, said good morning five times, peaced out. And then we got like the event on the stage. Mm -hmm. And I had a moment where I was like, do I want events back where it's just like a dude on a stage giving us a live demo? Because that's a different vibe. And yeah. it's much slower. Yeah. But as an as a person getting entertained, I still really enjoy the cinematic transitions mm -hmm. and the fun. It's just so much harder to write fast, yeah. like yeah. as it's yeah. happening. It is what it is. I think they're both good. Yeah. Do you want to do price? Pro. Same. Oh yeah. Sorry. Same price. Same price. Seven ninety nine and eight ninety nine for iPhone fifteen and iPhone fifteen plus. They also mentioned something at the end. It was like eight hundred dollars off if you trade in an iPhone. That was 11 or to newer. certain carriers. To certain carriers, yeah. carrier deals are insane. Carrier that deals sounds are like wild a, a wild deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then you get locked into a contract, which is yeah the other part of that to deal. Two-year contract or whatever. No, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Boost <laughs> Mobile, baby. I'll give you eight hundred bucks off your phone, but then you'll be paying. <laughs> you'll be a paying lot. me for the next two years. Exactly. Just get Pixel Pass. Oh, isn't there also um, <laughs> <Deep cut. laughs> too soon, Andrew? <laughs> There's uh, one more feature. Roadside assistance via satellite. satellite. Oh, nice. So I your that leg completely. didn't fall off, but you still need roadside assistance, yeah. and you're in a no service area. You can get roadside assistance AAA, yeah. instead of being like nine one one. Yeah, I, I don't that's know. super. Just knowing you have that yeah. is huge. You know what's crazy? Like... They played like the sob story video of like three different people who got like lost in the Andes and almost froze to death. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, as soon as they launched that satellite feature, was that like last year? Yeah. They were immediately probably just having people going around being like, have you used this yet? Have They're you used shooting this yet? people Who's into the this? mountains. Did someone use this? Yeah. Because they had like three or four people who were like, I would have died. I think Damn. the stories kind of just get out there. Like if it happens Maybe. to you, I'm sure, you just yeah. like tweet about it. Like there's an article in the paper. Like people just find that stuff. All, oh, you know what though? They have all the information of everyone that's ever used it. That's also true. So they could save somebody and then be like, yeah. can we use you in the commercial? <laughs> yeah. You use the button and you get a letter in the mail. Like, did it work? They're like, well, you did just save my life. So I <laughs> did guess. It work? <laughs> did it work? I and guess. do you want to be in a video? Yeah. All anyway. right. iPhone 15 Pros. We have two new phones and again, iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. They are the same screen sizes, but the first kind of notable interesting thing is the bodies are a little bit smaller and the bezels are a little bit trimmer, mm -hmm. so they're a little bit smaller in the hand. Thanks, man. I've been working out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's true. But also, uh, actually, I'll start with titanium. Titanium. They're titanium now. Is what I felt like about it. So titanium is both stronger and lighter than stainless steel. I only care about one of those things. It's lighter in the hand. That's really nice to me. I don't think the stronger is gonna matter. And my only reason is because my anecdotal evidence of I've dropped my iPhone on the stainless steel rails before, it just gets dented and it's totally fine. That's not the part that breaks. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. the glass that breaks. Whenever yeah, yeah, yeah. I see stuff like this, it's like, it's the glass that's breaking that yeah. I care the most about. And yeah. it's the same glass as last year, as far as we can tell, it's ceramic shield and all that, but it's not like you have like thicker, like bumpers around yeah. the corners or anything. It's like, all right, titanium is lighter and that's better. Well, and apparently titanium scratches easier and that's why they did the brushed look. I like the brushed look better though. No, yeah, that's looks, better it, than polished anyways. I agree, because yeah. it gets less fingerprints and yeah. yeah i think it just looks but yeah it it looks fingerprints better. and it's shiny this just like will always kind of look the yeah. same which yeah. i think is way better and brush metal looks sweet i think yeah, yeah definitely so that's that it's also got a eight bro is this, you didn't say it's space titanium oh yeah true. oh sorry <laughs> okay the Come same on. titanium they, used they really on. they the ripped Lunar apart the Lander. mars rover to build these phones they yeah. said it's a mars. class five titanium alloy grade five Grade five. Grade five? Grade Sorry, five. Grade, of course. How could I forget? Grade yeah, fifth grade. Grade five. Five. Fifth class. grade titanium alloy. 5G? 5G. Aerospace grade. COVID. It's in the Mars rover. I don't know where, but it's in there somewhere. 
So take that for what you want. They ended the space shuttle so they could build iPhone 15 Pro. <laughs> you had to use the metal, bro. They mined it. We recycled the space shuttle. Yeah. Um, there's a new set of cameras. We'll talk in depth about the cameras, but there's also an A17 Pro chip, which is they a three nanometer it. chip. It's the first time they've used the word pro in a chip, which leads me to believe they're going to keep doing that. Um, that but, is interesting, though. Yeah. Because you know how they put the A16 Bionic in the regular one this year? That yeah. means next year the iPhone 16 regular will have a new chip called the A17. They've, give them, they've given themselves the window to completely reuse the A16 Bionic again or to make an A17 Bionic that is a step below what the A17 Pro is now. That will probably be all the ones that got binned because they didn't yep. meet the threshold for what Easy. they wanted. Yeah, one Easy. less GPU core. It might happen. Yeah. I'm not I'm not making a prediction now, but I'm just saying they gave themselves that window. Yeah, I could, could see happen. it. Yeah. Um, but it is a very very impressive. I mean, it's a 3 nanometer chip. We haven't seen that anywhere else yet. Allegedly pretty big performance increases and also efficiency increases. I hope it's a better battery life. I mean, I'm always hoping for better battery life, but there's no more. There's no faster charging, so I'm just hoping for better battery all the time. Um, that A17 Pro chip also has a USB 3 controller on it, mm -hmm. which means, if you're paying attention, that the other chip does not. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the the Pro iPhones will have faster wired data transfer speeds, 10 gigabits per second, huge upgrade over USB 2, and the non-Pro iPhones will have the same USB 2.0 speeds that Lightning did. 480 megabits. 480 megabits per second, not fast at all. And I said this in the impressions video, like most people probably don't care. Like who, how much do you plug your phone in for real? Like do you really transfer that much data? It's going to matter for the pro phones because people are gonna shoot a lot more big files, ProRes video being the one that I interface with the most. And I cannot wait to not have to wait 45 minutes to yeah. import 15 minutes of video. Every time we do an autofocus. I feel like the thing that takes the longest in autofocus is transferring yeah. the footage over. Like, you are so efficient with those, you Probably get them out true. before I even know you start. I think and most of it is you waiting. They literally take longer to... If you broke down the pie chart of how long it takes, it's like an hour to shoot, an hour to import, and an hour to edit. Yeah. It might be more than an hour to import sometimes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um... So I'm happy about that. It's not Thunderbolt. I kind of wish they went all the way and gave us yeah. Thunderbolt like 20, 30, 40 gigabits per second. Maybe they'll do that in another future version. But yeah, I could see them waiting to push that later to make it like we went all the way. Big update. Thunderbolt 3, baby. Yeah. I mean, it's still very capable. Like you can now do like uh, capture one sessions on the iPhone. I would never do this, but you could literally have yeah. like your iPhone plugged into a monitor with capture one running and just like do a live photo shoot with hundred megabyte files flying mm -hmm. back but and can forth. Can you imagine you're like, I'm a professional photographer. I'm using, I'm having a bunch of people in my studio and I'm using my iPhone. <laughs> you can go straight to a hard drive. That's true. Yes. Yes. I Which think... also enables 4K 60 ProRes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You need it. If in you're the hooked up to the hard drive. That I know you love hand. 60 FPS. Well, <laughs> What I do love slow -mo. is if I use True. a much faster drive, yes. I want to try this, like a Thunderbolt drive, plug it in, shoot ProRes directly to that from the iPhone, unplug, plug into my computer, two-minute import. I think that'll be faster than just going straight in. I think it will be that faster. That move. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. going to try that. Stay tuned to autofocus if I do that. Yeah. Um, nice plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the port. Yeah. The port. I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Nice plug. <laughs> yeah. All right. But I think the camera is the last. I just got that. Big. Good no, I like we, that well, there's also action. Oh, there's true. action, but we also haven't talked about the colors that just, you know. Well, they're not that. We haven't even talked nice. about ray they're tracing. Sick. <laughs> okay. So we've got a bucket of things. Ray tracing, <laughs> action button, cameras. Which one are we going to do first? Ray tracing. Just because it's the quickest. Okay. You they can do four tracing. times faster. There's ray tracing. All right. So the cameras. <laughs> Please explain this. I'm so confused. So the a guy named Ray, he... <laughs> Okay, so a, a lot of uh, Android phones. Yeah, are you? A oh, wait, I thought we were Aren't talking about the gamer? cameras. No. Yeah. No, oh. No, no. oh no. He was joking. Oh. Yeah. It was a pretty bad joke. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. Okay. Well, you're doing it. So just explain <laughs> ray tracing. Yeah. Oh, tell us the story okay, so, of Raymond Trace. <laughs> yeah, Raymond Trace. Many years ago, in 2018 or so, Nvidia created this thing called ray tracing. This is the worst bedtime story I've ever heard. The, it's to put you to sleep. That's the point. <laughs> Uh, so generally in video games, they have to like 
guess where the lighting is supposed to be using this like these like fake lights that don't actually emulate real <laughs> light rays because doing that math with a bazillion photons is really really hard. So Nvidia created this thing called ray tracing, which effectively um, excel it has accelerated cores to do specifically how real light bounces off of objects. Uh, people memed this for a very long time because they had this like RTX, <laughs> RTX on, on RTX on. off mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they charged a lot more for the cards. And a lot of people would probably be like, this is not that big of a deal. I think it depends on what games you're playing. There's yeah. there's some where it like- They have it in Minecraft it, now. Well, really? I didn't know they actually had it. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft, there's a lot funny. of games where it looks a lot better. There's a lot of games where you're like, okay. I and guess. it enabled like way more in terms of like yeah. glass reflections and light reflections yeah. and stuff like that. But I think you have to be playing those like super crazy I was like spider-man game on the ultra res and like you'd swing by a window and like see your reflection and yeah, it could do that way down. better than it can now which it yeah. wouldn't but yes yeah. it's I on think, the iphone now i think in the future when video games are even more immersive that kind of tech will be important so mm -hmm. it's good they're implementing it now but i think snapdragon chip started implementing that like four years ago so it coming now is a is fun. I think it was go. already enabled. It's just four times faster on the A17 Pro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They Which showed us a demo can... that they made specifically for the Pro, and it ran at 30 FPS, whereas the yeah. um, it would have run at like six or seven, six or seven FPS. Yeah. The cool thing though regarding ray tracing mm -hmm. is there's this whole conversation about Apple and gaming, and they were able to get a bunch of major studios to port full fledged games to the iPhone 7 15 Couple. Pro. Oh yeah, like Resident Evil Resident 4 Evil is coming, Village, right? Resident Evil 4 and Stardew Assassin's Valley. Started <laughs> Assassin's Creed um something, I don't one know. Of them. The one of them. One of the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. As a non-gamer, who do you care? No. I don't have an iPhone, so uh -oh. I don't <laughs> get yeah. But would you want one now that on my phone? Not really. Mm. There was a point where they said like which previously was only able on consoles, PCs, and Mac. And I just thought that was funny that they mentioned <laughs> it was on else. PCs before Mac. <laughs> yeah. But that, 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 that was, was funny. They I thought that was silly. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, um, I like how ray tracing was the easier thing to explain out of the three options yeah. we had. And here we are still. Yeah. It is funny that Apple's leaning into gaming and not, they did this at WWDC with like, they're trying to make it easier to game on Macs with that metal toolkit thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and now you can just play full-fledged console games on your phone, which is like, I don't know if people are going to do that, but I know in other markets, like Asia, like mm -hmm. in China, um, China's like something crazy, like 20% of Apple's revenue comes from China or something. A lot of people play games Mobile gaming phones. there Mobile is games huge. Is huge. Yeah. yeah. So if they can get more people to buy iPhones because of that, they're going to up their revenue like crazy. You got games on your phone? No. <laughs> they do. You have no idea. <laughs> All right, cameras. Hey, you got games on that thing? I actually think I, I, I'm going to just jump in just real quick to the action button. I think that's a pretty quick okay. one. Yeah. It is yeah. a new button yeah. in the same exact spot where the mute switch was on the Pro iPhones. Mm -hmm. And it is a customizable button. And I actually really like it because it's really customizable. Yeah. It's not to the full extent that, what was that button on... Um, was it a the Google Assistant button? The Bixby no, button? There was a couple. I mean, I think it was an Asus <laughs> phone that let me just literally do whatever yeah, I want. Uh, Zenfone 6 or something? Yeah, it's not full on Zenfone, but yeah. there is a nice little UI on the iPhone that lets you choose what you want it to do. You can hold it down and it by default will still be your mute switch. Or if you want, it can be a bunch of other stuff. It can be a focus. Uh, focus mode changer. It'll go to a specific focus mode every time you press, or it can be a magnifier, or it can open uh, the voice notes app. It can open a camera. Yeah, That's flashlight. Cool. Yeah, flashlight. Um, I love and, the voice notes app, by the way. Yeah, I think a lot of people will find that useful. That's I will probably dope. do camera because that's what I do on every other phone. Um, but the most interesting one is at the very end of the list. There's a Siri shortcuts list, mm -hmm. Boom. and so you can basically have that launch whatever app you want. If you have a if you have a routine you want it to run, open an app, do a certain task, start a new task, start a new calendar event, whatever. You can do that. It might be a little delay. I want yeah. to see about that. I'll yeah. try in the review, but it's there. And it'll change based on your focus mode. Exactly. Which is oh, amazing. I did not know that. Yeah, That's so really if you're yeah. in the like I have a morning focus mode, press it, it starts your coffee maker. And then you go to work, press it, it starts your coffee maker at work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You can see what David does on his <laughs> Siri shortcuts. Mark, I, I have a question about it. Yeah. So you hold it, and then it functions the same as yeah. the silent slider. There's yes. no Does it have time. a really nice haptic, like, mm, yeah, because the animation kind of implied Good that, question. but I haven't gotten to hold it. it. Great sound effect. Thank you. I'll do it again. Mm, yeah. I was surprised that it's a normal button. I thought it was going to be like the um, MacBook trackpad. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like them kind of loading up to that, but they're not quite ready for it yet. Mm. There are nice haptics behind the button. If you just 
touch the button, it will do the little haptics and show you what mode you're currently in. Mm. And if you long hold, I'm forgetting the haptic pattern. It might be the same, it might not be, but that's when you get the real heavy haptics and it's like, I'm switching. So, and I think Dynamic Island references like what it's changing as exactly. well too. There's like yeah. a nice little animation to show. They also what's... mapped um, the haptic pattern you get when you change into silent mode with the mute switch to feel exactly the same when you hold that so that you can do it in your pocket just like you do with the mute hmm. switch. Uh, and then when it is silenced, I believe, it will show the, a little silence icon in the top left corner. Like yeah, the there's time. a new indicator, yeah. Okay. Even, even in the always on display mode. Because oh, okay. they want to basically make it so you're not losing anything from the mute switch. So you're always knowing what kind of mode it's in. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. The only thing I'm missing from the mute switch is the little hint of color. Yeah, the orange. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll get there. hoping it Just was going to be accent. Accent color, man. Yeah. It's, and do you know what makes me mad is it has a really nice animation screen for when you're switching things and it shows all of them in different colors. I was like, you're just showing me how nice this would have looked like if it had an accent color. Could look uh, nice. this, <laughs> if I had one. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is a bunch of camera stuff per uh, usual with the pro iPhone. And I'm very interested in a lot of how well some of this will work. Yeah. So first of all, New camera system, new larger 48 megapixel main sen sensor. It is also doing the same 24 megapixel kick out of defiles by default. Yeah. Cool, great. I think the ultra wide is a little bigger too. There's a couple other modes, a new photonic engine and, and nighttime portrait mode shots. And there's a bunch of other stuff enabled. Here's what I was most curious by. And I, at, when I first saw this, I was like, I don't understand this at all. But now it's way more interesting. There's a 1X button and a 2X button. And you already know what the 2X button does, right? It crops into the middle 12 megapixels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then there's the 3X button, or in this case with the new 15 Pro Max, a 5X button, mm -hmm. which goes all the way into the furthest telephoto lens. But they now also have, if you press the 1X button again, it will zoom in to 1.2X. Mm -hmm. And if you press it again, it'll zoom in to 1.5X. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Okay, is there some world where people shoot 1.5x photos so often that it, they want a preset for it's it? It's about like, the focal length. Yeah, like, I think it's about the focal length. It really is. Oh, okay. So, okay. so in, this is we my first heated. impression as like... <laughs> David is about to flip this chair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Like, what, just crop your photo later. Like, I don't get it. It's totally fine to just shoot at 1x and then crop later. It's not. But it isn't <laughs> what's happening. It isn't actually a, a digital crop. So this is the correction. So... What's actually happening is Apple is doing this same like processing that they're doing where you know how we're getting a 24 megapixel shot on the full 48 megapixel frame. They're doing that same 24 megapixel output at the 1X and again natively at 1.2X and again natively at 1.5X. Yeah. And that's because people really like the focal lengths of 28 millimeters 24. and is it 24, 24 28, 28 35. and 35 millimeters, yeah. which is 1.5X. Yeah. So yeah. if you like the focal length look of 35 millimeters over 24, you'll hit that button, you'll get to 1.5X, and it will not be a digital crop. It will be still full quality, 24 megapixel shot with all the resolution that you would have gotten at 1X anyway. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You can even set your default 1X button to be 1.5X if you want. It's in the settings. You can just do 1.5X every time. Yeah. Um, so that's that's fascinating to me. I don't know how well it's going to actually work. I really want to test it. Also, like the 15 Pro does 3x telephoto. The 15 Pro Max does 5x telephoto. How do they handle that gap between. between 3x and 5x mm, on yeah. the two phones? We'll have to see. Is it worse on the Pro? Will a 4x shot be worse on the Pro Max? Probably. I feel like most people uh, use 3x more than they use 5x. So it's interesting probably. that they're doing the Tetra Prism. Yeah, a 3x shot will look worse on the Pro Max because it doesn't have a 3x lens. You'll be digitally zooming in. Yeah. So something to think about, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of new camera stuff. I thought it was funny too, and I, now we can see where it came from. There was that rumor that um, the Pro and Pro Max might get a periscope, uh, periscope lens, mm -hmm. but now we can just see that they saw a 3X and a 5X, thought it was a periscope lens since it's still three cameras, except they're just two different lenses on Well, each. the Max is a periscope lens. Is it? Yeah. It oh, could be similar just, to a periscope. I thought it was well, not quite. A periscope lens and a Tetra Prism are effectively the same thing. Almost. So a periscope lens faces 90 degrees into the side uh, of the phone okay, and then reflects yeah. light once to get out. Yeah. 
this tetra prism lens it is bounces. still facing the same way, but they've That's compressed true. the the lens into this sort of like multiple yeah. reflections, and then still so, so it's still facing the same degree way. Degree bouncing. Thing. Not that it matters to the end user, but yeah. they have this three axis uh, sensor shift stabilization, and yeah. it's still facing the same way. So that's kind of cool. Damn, Mark has just well actually, David. Yeah, it's just I'm pretty I, sure I was okay, still wrong yeah. in the this process. This is anyways. semantics. Yeah, all right, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> but that's something to yeah. to note why they're naming it something different. I guess tetra prism. Tetra prism. Cool. I think they just use those big words to make people think it's more advanced than it actually is. I think is. it's more prisms than a normal periscope lens, so sure. maybe you might as well flex it if, I you're, guess. if you're Apple, I flex guess. Flex it if you got it. Flex it if you got it. Why not? Yep. Um, faster lightning, or faster USB-C, we did that. We Fa same charging speeds. Oh, with I'm the cameras, though, with the cameras. Now that they have log recording, yeah. uh, you could theoretically mix it in with other footage. Yeah. And Apple is apparently, I asked them about this, they're apparently providing a log transformation to Rec. Yeah. 709, which is cool. Yeah, because uh, and HDR I, as well. Yeah, and an HDR version of that, which is really awesome. They said to developers, which is interesting. So I feel like you might have to have a developer account to get oh. it, which is kind of weird. Well, that should not. <laughs> Mark has just broke. If as a user I can shoot log, as a user I should. Be but able then you to have get to pay hundred dollars. That to... would be insane. No, I'm not sure me the on that. Yeah, someone's gonna sell the let for a dollar on the App Store. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, you can shoot log if you want. Um, oh, yeah, spatial video. Yes. Yes. So now, <laughs> so with Vision Pro, yeah, we had that meme where the, did. the dad had the Vision Pro on and was pushing his face birthday into the party. daughter's face and her friends, and they're and like, like oh, birthday what cake. Are you doing? Yeah. Um, he was recording spatial audio on spatial yeah, the video. Yeah, spatial so, video. So you can only do spatial video on the Pro because uh, the non-Pro, the cameras are like at a forty-five degree angle of each other. But to do parallax video, you have to have them in the same axis. So the way that the camera is set up in the pros is like main camera top, wide camera below, telephoto on the right. So it uses the wide camera and the main camera and just does parallax and that creates the 3D uh, spatial video effect. So you can watch that back. Which is so much more natural. Like it's, I actually think the spatial video thing is kind of cool now. Because you can actually was, do it in different places without having to take the pro and strap it to your face and take video of it. 100%. Which is crazy. People already take videos of their daughter's birthday party. They take special video and then they can send it to the grandma who's wearing a Vision Pro at her apartment. That's depressing. I'm, I will forever be intrigued <laughs> by is. the decision, <laughs> though, to shoot that precious moment as spatial video. I guess the because question is what is the video like? You can only view it I in that because so. it is just taking it from two cameras. I, I, yeah, I don't think assume maybe it can record res. from both. Is it taking the full think, quality from both? I think so. Really? I bet it I would. I think it has I mean, the amount of pipeline. I do not know this for sure, but I can assume it's shooting from both cameras, and it you would, would have yes. It would be nice if it was like but you live can do it straight photos. to a hard drive now, so you're good. You know how live photos, like you never select live photos; it just always does it in yeah. the background. It would be cool as if you selected spatial video. And it also kicked out a regular video that you get. And then it's like, this also has spatial capabilities baked in. I just, I know that you can't shoot 4K 120 on the phone because it doesn't process fast enough. And I just think if you can't shoot 4K 60 twice, then you can't shoot spatial 4K 60. Unless you have two ISPs, which it has, right? Well, you can't shoot 4K 20, 120 now. Right. So the, whatever the max ability of the phone is right now, we'll say is 4K60. But usually it's not like multiplicative. Like if you have two separate ISPs, those don't always merge together to be able to do like 4K120. Oh. Yeah. Well, then so we I, should be able to do 4K120. I think the reason we maybe, can't do 4K120 yeah. is, is because we've maxed out the ISPs we have on the phone. Probably true, yeah. So if you want to shoot 4K60 spatial video... You won't have enough computing power to do it because that's two 4K 60, which is basically 4K 120, and maybe we don't have do the processing 4K power. 4K 30, maybe. So you could do 4K 30. Just yeah. I'm, it won't be necessarily the max quality. Yeah. I don't. This is looking. So I lost far you guys ahead, so like, long ago. Well, it's <laughs> interesting because you think about it from like Apple's perspective, and it's like they probably want everything you watch on Vision Pro to be as high frame rate that's as possible assume, yeah. to make sure you don't get dizzy. So yeah. I feel like they want you to shoot 4K 60. Yeah, that's like a 90 hertz something like 90 yeah. hertz screen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You can buy 12 terabytes of iCloud storage now. So that's true. Oh, right. Worry about it. That was yeah. People actually cheer. cheered. That the <laughs> yeah, that was the loudest cheer. It was. And it, it was, was inter I want to know um, if the family plan will be updated. I be of course you do. Because they. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought they did mention that it was. <laughs> I have a family plan on every single every single platform. Um, 
with my family. With your family. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't have a family, so. Uh, but David, no. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, because I share that two gig, two terabytes of iCloud storage with my family, and it would be really nice if I could use twelve. And true. I yeah, I want to see what the pricing is because they immediately talked. They immediately after they said we now have up to twelve terabytes, they were like, so family plan members can have even more storage yeah, together. I and I was right. like. How much is that going to cost me, though? Because I really want I mean, that. more, I'm sure. Yeah, probably more. They also mentioned, I mean, last thing we'll talk about on this, I think, is um, price. Yeah. I really uh, liked how they said, <laughs> same price, nine ninety nine for Pro. And the Max is the same price as the 256 gigabyte model last time. They had to explain that yeah, so yeah. hard when Jaws was, was like, so technically, I think I wrote, it's the same price. Also matches last year's price with this level of storage. Yeah. Same Which thing. like NAND chips are like six dollars. Okay, so just for those listening, the iPhone 15 Pro is the same price as the iPhone 14 Pro, nine ninety nine. Yeah. The iPhone 15 Pro Max starts a hundred dollars more than the 14 Pro Max did. It's eleven ninety nine, but it also starts at two hundred fifty six gigs of storage instead of mm-hmm. one twenty eight. So the two fifty six gig phone last year was also eleven ninety nine. You just don't have the ability to do yeah. one twenty eight. <laughs> right. So technically, yeah. <laughs> It's the same price. They're upping their base margins by $100 a unit. Well played. So interesting. Yeah. Well played. Also, did you see um, the website updated that the $20 Apple polishing cloth is now compatible with the titanium iPhone? <laughs> Wait, actually? Yeah. yeah. They updated the they updated polishing it. cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compatibility chart. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Someone's in charge. What else are you going to clean it with? (laughs) Someone gets paid $300,000 a year to do that. That's incredible. Somebody hit enter on that and they were like, yeah, I knew knew this was coming. This is my job. Real quick, I know we got to kind of like move this, but we didn't talk about colors. What's your favorite color of pro? Raw. Interesting question. Raw. 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 I think that's proof of how good the raw titanium is because the black titanium is very feels like your phone and it's you still true. like the raw time. it's true there it looks is a so matte good. black phone i changed I think, my opinion i think fingerprints will make that a little tough yeah there is also a new blue it's slightly bad. blue but it's dark blue it's bad it's not as blue. It, pacific blue is better i yeah. think we all agree there's better blues but then there's white and raw mm-hmm. and this raw titanium is kind of like this Silver. warmer more natural looking titanium color yeah. i like that it looks really good it kind of reminds me of this yeah Apple watch titanium i That's wish why they had, had an orange accent button i wish they brought yeah. gold titanium which is a different mixture technically but it has like this really nice gold sheen in it and my fujifilm tx1 is gold titanium there raw gold titanium Dang. i want Sounds my expensive. i want my phone from 2023 to match my camera from 1990 so Pete what were they thinking, thinking? yeah come on guys <laughs> you should have been thinking 50 years in the past fascinating yeah. all right i think that's everything with iphone pro stuff maybe question mark yeah i think it is i guess but we still want to talk about anyone's more getting about one more thing that we'll get to after the break but before we get to the break let's do one more trivia question That's oh, right. No. I knew it. Were you paying attention? I was. The I'm so show ready for this. game game show where we test your attention span. All right. Oh no. While showing off the new A16 chip. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Sip. A16 sip. A17. Uh, S9 sip. You were wrong on both ends there. I think. <laughs> yeah. Is it? What, no. Well, it was the A17. The A17 is the new Pro. one, and the sip is the, the right. S9 one. So, so far, were I was not paying attention. attention. <laughs> I guess not. But I do know this. 16 core neural engine. Yep. They were showing it off. Okay, so that so that A17 Pro mm-hmm. is what you're talking about. No, this was on the 15. I, A16 I, Bionic. A7, okay, now A7, I'm lost. A17. This is on the non-Pro 15. I A16, can tell. Bionic. A16 Bionic. Okay. Bionic. okay, yeah, I got you. It's just not new. It's you not new. It new. That's not even the question. <laughs> <laughs> this we is are ridiculous. On top of this right now. Yeah, we, are we all were paying attention. I think we all, all right, just get a point. Right. <laughs> Apple showed an example of a live voicemail transcription. What was the subject of the voicemail? I don't even remember that. A, picking <laughs> okay. up a child from soccer practice. B, confirming a dinner reservation for later that evening. C, lobsters. <laughs> or D, all of the above. This was a voice memo? It was a live voicemail transcription. Oh, oh. Interesting. Cool. Wow. I feel like D is the... Um, it's the one that we're supposed to pick, Probably. but it's going to be wrong. I I swear I was paying attention, 
I don't know the answer to this one. I feel like I'd remember lobsters. I was probably taking notes. Here's the thing about watching a keynote and taking notes. When something important is happening, I'm paying attention. And then the second something not important is happening, I'm writing down what was important. Or tweeting. Until the next important thing. Yeah. And then I'm writing that down until the next important thing. So this strikes me as something while I was writing. Yeah. I was also (laughs) tweeting from the studio account. Yeah. So It sounds like a bunch of excuses. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, that's what we do. We make excuses. That's our job. We'll we'll answer them after the break. Somebody will be right. Okay. I promise. Mm-hmm. They won't. We'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> we might be wrong. All right, welcome back. Last but not least, I take it back. This is the least um, <laughs> least important thing. Because this is what I talked about last week. I was like, is the most important thing about AirPods going to be USB Type-C? Yes, the new AirPods Pro 2 have USB Type-C and it is the most important change to them. Asterisk. But it's not the only change to them. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing they mentioned in the keynote. Yeah. That's a great point, Andrew. Yes. Big old now, asterisk. Uh, it sounds like you guys fought over if you were right or wrong <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah. I, it's just, so this is one of those things that kind of got um, pseudo announced. It, it's like when the site gets updated and the background pages get updated, but they don't mention the keynote. This is one of those things. So to make it perfectly clear, AirPods, Pro 2 with lightning cable or with lightning and wireless charging is one product we've had for a while. Brand new AirPods Pro 2 with USB-C and wireless charging. Different product. Now this was not mentioned on stage, but the only difference to the product that actually matters is if you have an Apple Vision Pro headset, um, the new USB-C cased AirPods Pro 2 (laughs) will be capable of uh, lossless wireless audio with single digit millisecond uh, lossless, uh, single digit millisecond response times. Like it's it's low latency lossless audio. Okay. So it's gonna make this like awesome, you know, engaging, like fully immersive experience. If you use that, it's gonna be high quality. Apple made a new compression, made a new like codec just for this, which is super, super cool. This will not work with the current Lightning AirPods Pro 2. You cannot buy just the case. It's a new set of earbuds. I tried. So they're so they're the same. So it's the same generation. It's still AirPods Pro 2, but there's a new architecture. There's a new something hardware related inside that makes only the new ones compatible. Just if you have Apple Vision Pro and want to do lossless low latency audio. If you don't, they're effectively the same product with a new port. Can I say the official name of this product? Sure. All right. It is free engraving. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's it, it's right there. Okay. Uh, AirPods Pro parentheses second generation close parentheses with MagSafe charging case parentheses USB C close parentheses. That is rolls the full off the name. tongue. If I want to walk out into That's Best what my Buy, Christmas list is gonna say. Yeah. It's a mom. <laughs> yeah. Hey mom, I really want the AirPods Pro second generation but all MagSafe really charging case USB C. I just want the USB AirPods, and everyone knows what you're talking about. For now. For now. Until <laughs> yeah. we get a USB AirPods Max, I guess. Yeah. And or AirPods Three. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. But for now, these are the only ones with USB C. True. Yeah. So an interesting quirk. Just want to get that out there. If if anyone was thinking about getting Apple Vision Pro, and you just we're thinking about your headphone situation. Those are still allegedly on track to ship early. You know, maybe you want to pair those things up. Just so you know, the new ones with USB-C are the ones that can do the new fancy trick. That also makes sense. Like, it seems like they're upgrading a lot of their products ahead of time to really make sure the Vision Pro is a seamless experience for as many people as possible. Some people even mentioned they were like, Vision Pro is so expensive, they could just throw in a pair of these. And There's a lot of things. The earbuds. That's been true about chargers in the phone box, too. It's, they're just... <laughs> yeah, they won't. But yeah, they won't. yeah, but it's just like it's it's cool that they're upgrading ahead, everything ahead of time. So now people are going to be used to tapping. Yeah. People are going to mm-hmm. be have these like headphones that don't have any latency. All eyes are on Kinda Vision cool. Pro. Yeah. yeah, seems like that's or in Vision, in Vision Pro. Pro. No, through Vision Pro. <laughs> the first product you see through, not that. It's true or something. <laughs> I hated that. Thank hey, you. Thanks. Either way, that that's basically. I mean, we've gone through all of our most interesting important announcements i think what we wanted to do now is just go back through our predictions that we made last week and just see mm-hmm. yeah. how many points we racked up and if we were correct about anything interesting i think we, yeah okay let's do that cool prediction time prediction, prediction time. time all right and because we're awarding trivia points here i feel obliged to oh <laughs> all right 
All right, Marquez, last week mm -hmm. you predicted. What did I say? USB C will be the most important update to the new AirPods. After deliberating for hours, literal hours, <laughs> going back and forth, we have decided we'll put this one on hold because we feel it's not clear yet if that's the case. That's true. Really? Yeah. yeah. The we, only other possible new feature is something that you can only use if you have a $3,500 headset that's not out yet. But what as if it's of, awesome? As of right now, <laughs> that's fair. Exactly. we feel okay. that Apple may have some tricks up their sleeves and may roll this feature out on these buds later. I or say just... I get the point now and take the point back if something cool <laughs> happens. The season's, the season's gonna be over before then. That's yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll exactly. revisit this at season's end and see how we I don't know feel. if the, are, is, are the Vision Pro gonna be out by season's end? Don't worry about it. Right. Um, David, you predicted that all iPhone 15s will have USB-C. Let's go. But then what? you added that oh, the Pro yeah, said... will have Thunderbolt, which was wrong. It's, not, it's so half close. wrong. You are close. It's a it's three quarters wrong. USB three, yeah. But Marquez, not you agreed with him. I did, which means you are missing out on that point. Oh, I which gives agreed Andrew. Disagree. Is this a two Let's point go. question though? Is wow. this a two point question? No, no, these are all all or nothing. Wow. Which really hurt Andrew, who said the iPhone 15 <laughs> Pro will have an action button. It will not have an accent color. And then he went and ruined it by saying they'll put out a case <laughs> that does have an accent color, <laughs> which they did not. Did have we looked that? at all of them? Well, I the looked two at were so all obvious, of them. I think I wanted to have something. Ellis spent like a solid twenty minutes digging. Did you the dig? I, I really wanted to find a case. Yeah. Instead, they just made an animation in the settings with an accent color. But yeah. that's really funny. Yeah. They really were just messing with me. I feel like Marquez nice. and David, you guys both got one point for disagreeing. Oh, so nice. our, Delta, with Andrew. our deltas <laughs> so exactly the same. Too, yeah. Right back to where we started. <laughs> yep. <maybe>. And um, <laughs> despite so a dedicated listener writing in and claiming they saw an Among Us figure yeah. somewhere in the presentation, we were not able to confirm. I looked for so long. John told me he saw one. Such I mean, a fact. If you out there found an Among Us dude. Screenshots only. Yeah, send it in. Otherwise, for now. Stamps. I found stamps. RuneScape, Mario, Clash of Clans. I found every other game in that that tile. I where like, all the games. Yeah, well, I yeah, looked yeah. for so long for Among Us. Maybe I'm convinced else. they listened to Waveform and took that Yo, out. Yo, this fine woven <laughs> kind of looks like leather. What? Doesn't Where? <laughs> I'm looking. I was looking David, for. David, David, okay, David. thank okay, you. Sorry. No, no, no. Never <laughs> mind. No, don't you yell at him. He's trying to help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Marquez, David, you guys both get one point for that. Andrew, I appreciate you sticking with me, but sadly, we're going down with the ship. <laughs> um, and that brings us to... Oh, our... you guys each got two points then, right? No, because it's not... They disagreed it's not with individual. the Among Us? It's not individualized. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so you guys did both get two points for your predictions. Way to go. Cool. Uh, I still remain scoreless. What a shame. <laughs> But now for our actual trivia questions, All right. oh, I'll no. kick it to Adam. All right. I'm so quick update on the score so now natural. that you guys have gotten those points. Marquez with eight. Andrew with one, two, three. three. <laughs> Harry the four. <laughs> Every uh, week. Yeah. Oh, he's got four. Andrew's oh, got four. That's not bad. Yeah, Yo. not bad. David with nine, still in the lead. Wow. First question. Which iPhone was the first to come with Is there like a writing FaceTime? thing on this? Notes app? Oh, sorry. I don't notes. know how to use notes app. Can you write. please? I, I didn't have my phone out. Wait, I don't know what the notes app is. How do you, you guys write? pull down from Spotlight and yeah. search oh. notes? Oh. 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 Hey, I'm just gonna do reminders. Button. Okay. Oh. Where do I draw? Make a shortcut real quick. Where do I draw? Wait, what was the question? <laughs> Where do I draw? <laughs> Which Which was iPhone the was the first to come with FaceTime? <laughs> <laughs> I'm torn between. I'm torn two. between. I just pressed the button. We're on my AirPods. The same I'm. Two. Wait. Which? <laughs> okay. I want to pick the same one you picked. You can't decide. <laughs> I know, you, but are I, you gonna? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I'm just happy my cool FaceTime. iPad handle will let me <laughs> flip this over okay. so nice, but then it won't be nice because it's in the Reminders app and it looks like Yeah, Marquez and I are... Yeah, All okay. right. Flip them yeah. and read, please. The reading is very <laughs> important. I can't even read yours. <laughs> <laughs> Honor system? What does that say? You have a tablet in your four. hand. So I was torn between 4 and 4S, but I picked iPhone 4. Correct. I said iPhone uh, 5. Yes. Mm. Oh, David, no. what'd you say? 4S. Can I not draw Dang. on this one? I was also torn between 4 and 4S. Because that was the big yeah. new iPhone with the front-facing camera and the new design and FaceTime and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, I just thought that 
maybe they had a new processor and they were like, now we can do video at I 720p. Thought about that. There, yeah. there was an important new feature released that, on the 4S. Do you remember what it I think was? That was a new high res video. 4S? Yeah, 4S. Siri. It was our girl S Siri. For Siri. Yeah. 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 I just got that qu that question so quickly that I thought it was too easy. I was like, damn, did I mess up? He's like, oh, it's the iPhone 4. I, I was thought, like, how do you know yeah. this? I was so locked between 4 or 4. Yeah, I just tied Andrew. Let's go. Wait, Andrew, what'd you put? Five. Oh. You, you, tied, you tied me. Yeah, we're, we're naked. Yeah, you tied Oh, I tied, I tied, okay, I tied, yeah. Yeah, I tied David. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Question two. All right. All right. A16 Bionic, if that's that important to you guys. <laughs> Live voicemail transcription, what was the subject? A, picking up a child from soccer practice. B, a dinner reservation for later that evening. C, lobsters. <laughs> or D, all of the above. Lobsters. I just, like, it's gotta be, did you see what I wrote? No. It's oh. gotta be D. I don't know. Do you think? Is that the... I mean, I found the notes up. I wait. have the voicemail in front of me, and I will read it to you uh, after giving you the right answer. That really makes me think it's D. Wait, I need to. Oh, my writing thing went away. Hold on, I can do it. You got like <laughs> you, three seconds. Uh, you put yours down. Already. Okay, I did it. Good. All right, flip them and read. Whoa. Okay, we all have different answers. Marquez, I really Dude. can't see your screen at I all. I wrote <laughs> A. Yeah, it's D. Mine says, this is a test note. The first note, and then I wrote, a, drew a lobster. So That's it. Let's it was go. about lobsters. David, oh, what do you have? D. <sighs> Damn. How's I'm that? sorry, guys. The voicemail on I the screen, it. and this is not a joke. The voicemail <laughs> that someone received and was live transcribed was, hey, did you know lobsters never stop growing? Like, ever? <laughs> Nature is wild. <laughs> Please nice. never call me. <laughs> wow. that I'm going to leave you that voicemail every day. Yeah. <laughs> Next time I call Adam and he doesn't pick up, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, they have apples here. Why? <laughs> of course they have of apples here. Of course they have apples here. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all we want to say today. And we have a lot more, of course, coming up. It's tech -tember. I got. I mean, we're here at Apple Park. We're going to be back in our studio. We got more to talk about. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for the reviews of like everything we just talked about. Ideally, we can answer all of our questions. And uh, if you do know more about ecosystems and sustainability and recycling materials, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I think that's it. What's Twitter? Sorry, X. No. It's Twitter. No, 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 no. It's, it's Twitter. Twitter. X what? Tw Twitter.com. I think that will still work if you go to Twitter.com slash MKBHD. But if you can't find me there, <clears throat> X.com. Oh, it's weird. All the people are telling us we need to go. Yeah, uh, we okay. should probably wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should yeah. finish Thanks this up. Yeah, Is that yeah, Elon in the doorway? <laughs> I think we'll, no, uh, he's coming. Catch <laughs> y'all in the next one. See you later. Peace, Areno. Peace, my friends, Areno. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Roven. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. And thank you to all the Apple people here that are incredible and always do like a great job. But you gave them two mics, and now they're going to want two mics when we get home. We've tasted the I'll put the it on life. your bill. The mouse has eaten the cookie. This is not a drill. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>